This is the meeting that we had hoped our government would hold. Uh, when uh, our current government uh, came in, 2008, one of the first things they did was hold what they called a job summit. Now, we can argue about what the outcome of that was, uh, uh, but the very nature of recognising an issue at that time and doing something about it uh, was laudable. They brought together industry heads, uh, industry representatives, ec uh, economists, uh, uh, business experts and unionists. At that time, unemployment was under 5%. And that was seen as enough reason, uh, you know, to bring to people together and talk about solutions. Unemployment's now nearly 7%, and we've got some real emerging issues. Uh, and we believe the time's come for another such summit. Uh, so um, we decided to call it anyway. Uh, and that's because we believe there is a real issue. We believe there is an emerging crisis in jobs, particularly in the manufacturing sector, uh, and there's a real need for us to sit down together and talk about potential solutions. Some short term, some long term, some might not work, some might work for a while, whatever. We've at least got to be talking about it. I accept that the word crisis is a very subjective word and that someone can see a crisis somewhere and someone, someone doesn't see it. Uh, but from the perspective of my members, the latest high-profile redundancy announcements, TY Point, Spring Creek, Huntley East, North Skoog, Christchurch Engine Centre, from our perspective, they're just the latest in an escalating trend of redundancies that's been growing over the last year. And there's more to come. As a matter of fact, just yesterday our delegates at North Skoog were told, sorry, but the redundancies here are actually going to have to come in three months earlier than we thought, uh, because the problem's actually worse than we thought, uh, and that problem is primarily the effect of the exchange rate. Put those redundancies alongside growing unemployment, the exodus of, of New Zealanders to Australia that's masking the real rate of unemployment, it is no exaggeration from a working person's point of view, uh, from the point of view of my members at least, to say, well, we believe there's an emerging crisis. And what we've got to do is sit down and talk about it. So what we aim to do, bring people together, uh, find a solution. There needs to be a political solution. We need political leadership. Uh, we would have loved to have our government here today. Uh, and I, I can say, uh, look, they, uh, as you know, they just don't see the need. They don't see there is a, an issue. Uh, on behalf of the EPMU, I can't speak on behalf of any other organisation here in this hall. Uh, but I would uh, hope that we could continue to try and get some dialogue with the government, um, you know, anywhere, anytime, and talk about these issues and see if they can't uh, think about some creative solutions. Uh, so today is about uh, getting together, having a discussion. I might say that some people have said that this is a stunt. Um, I would invite those people to come and meet some of those redundant workers and their families with me. Might want to tell them it's a stunt. And I'm, I suppose I should be flattered about the fake um, um, emails uh, under my name uh, that are floating around the right-wing blogs um, trying to discredit me and those of you who come here today. Um, I think we've got more important things to do um, than respond to those or worry about them. So uh, um, I'd like to welcome our guests. I hope we have a good day. Can I say this? Working people create economies. Workers work hard for economies. They have a right to deserve and get an economy and an economic strategy uh, that works for them. So let's see if that starts here today. Now, I'm going to hand over to my colleague. Just one thing to reflect. All of our speakers on our two panels are men. Um, so I thought, we need a bit of social engineering here. Uh, so I've asked two of my senior colleagues, uh, who happen to be women, uh, to, to, to chair uh, the two meetings. So first up, Louisa Jones. Thank you. 
here I am, I'm a woman, look. Um, <laughs> what, what my job is to do today is to chair the business panel. Um, so what I'm going to do is ask our panellists to please um, come up and take a seat up here if you can. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask them to please speak one at a time. And they're only going to speak for five minutes each and I'm going to hold them to that so that we don't go ahead of the schedule. Um, and I'll in introduce them just before they speak. And what I'd ask you to do is to, if you have any questions, please save them up. We'll just get through them all one at a time like this, boom, 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 boom. And then when that's done, we, we'll have a period of doing questions and answers. Is that fair and clear? Cool. Okay, so the first person that I'm going to introduce to um, speak for us is uh, Peter Conway. Peter Conway has been an active trade unionist since 1977. For nine years, he worked as an economist for the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions, also their policy director. And since 2009, he has been, and still is, the elected secretary of the New Zealand Council of Trade Unions. We're really proud to have him here today. Thank you, Peter.